Hello, my name is R.A. Carbajal, and I've just recently completed writing my first book, The Blade, The Beginning. During my research for the book, I discovered a few points that I had always considered to be true facts about what we call here in Texas the crown jewels of the state of Texas. These had to deal with certain aspects of the Battle of the Alamo and the Battle of the San Jacinto. So what I'd like to do is, starting today, or starting with this video, is take you on a tour, a guided tour of some of the more uh, obscure facts that people don't really stop to think about. And let's see if we can have a little fun with history. So come on, let's go. In this video, we're going to explore where the Alamo defenders were buried, or where we think they may be buried. And in this video, we're gonna talk about three of the most, the more common misconceptions or beliefs as to where the Alamo defenders are buried. Alamo is at the far right-hand corner at a place called Powderhouse Hill. This is a uh, location that is considered to be the lost grave site of the Alamo defenders. It exists about 1,000 yards to the east-southeast of the Alamo compound proper, and many people believe that some of the remains uh, are buried here, and we're going to look at uh, some of the facts behind that burned in another location, but not here where they are buried. Uh, and originally buried and saw their transfers from that place to the old cemetery on Powderhouse Hill, which is now called Odd Fellow Cemetery, a rather unusual name. This, he states, happened in 1856, which is 20 years after the battle. The fragments of the bodies had been first buried in 1836 and some in 1837. Now this is a, over a space of two years and we don't know where actually they were buried. Mr. Biesenbach states that these bodies were buried midway between the monuments of Captain R.A. Gillespie and Captain Samuel H. Walker. Uh, and to the left and right of this uh, marker are the monuments to Captain Gillespie and Captain Walker. And this is erected on behalf of the Alamo Defenders Descendants Association. Uh, I don't know if that organization still exists to this day or not. Next, we'll return our attention back to the siege map and look at the center location marked. This is the uh, Alameda. It's located about 100 paces south-southeast behind the Alamo. It is here that several witnesses state that Santa Ana had the bodies of the defenders taken, stacked into two large piles with alternating uh, layers of, of wood, set afire, and the uh, pyres burned for two days, after which some of them were buried. Now, uh, some say they were buried in 1836, right after the cremation, some in 1837, which Juan Seguin, who was a who fought, survived both the Alamo and San Jacinto, uh, came back in 1837, collected some of the ashes, and states that he buried them underneath the floor of the altar in San Fernando Cemetery. The question comes is that after a year of being out on the open Alameda, open to the elements, the rain, the wind, the sleet, the night critters, their scavengers, what could have been left? We're not too sure. It couldn't have been much, if anything. Remaining with the siege map, we look at the far left uh, marker. This is the uh, St. Mary's Church site. St. Mary's Church was alternately described as St. David's Church, but it is St. Mary's Church, interestingly enough, located on St. Mary's Street, about four city blocks from the Alamo compound. Witness, a uh, female witness says that she observed Santa Ana bring the bodies of the Texas defenders here, stack them into two stacks, and set them afire where the bodies burned for two days, after which they were buried. Some were buried, some were left out. In 1837, once again states that he came back a year after the battle, collected up some of the remains, and buried them underneath the altar in San Fernando Cemetery. The question here is, what could have been left of the remains, if any, after a year on the Alameda, open to the elements, the rain, the wind, the sleet, and the uh, scavengers and night animals. Couldn't have been very much, if anything, at all. Finally, I'd like to discuss, well, not finally, there's two more points, I, uh, locations I'd like to discuss. This one, probably the most important, is the uh, Alamo Coffin, located inside the San Fernando Cathedral, just outside of the military plaza, about a quarter to a half a mile from the Alamo. 
It's here that Juan Seguin states that in 1837 he came and collected some of the remains, as I said earlier, and buried them underneath the uh, altar, or the, the front of the altar at the, at the cathedral. Later, uh, these remains were exhumed and placed in this beautiful stone coffin, granite coffin, located just to the inside on the left-hand side of the San Fernando Cathedral foyer. Finally, I'd like to address the Cenotaph. The Cenotaph is the stone monument that's erected to the Alamo defenders located directly outside of the chapel. It's a beautiful monument, as you can see. There are likenesses of many of the Alamo defenders, among them Bowie, Travis, and Crockett. The, uh, the Cenotaph is erected in their memory. Many visitors who come here believe that this is where they were buried, that they were cremated and they were buried. Unfortunately, that's not the case. Uh, but it is a beautiful monument, it is a beautiful structure, and uh, it's erected in their memory, and rightfully so. Finally, it's almost a certainty, no it is a certainty, that we will never know exactly where their bodies are buried. I like to believe that the San Antonio, or the defenders of the Alamo rest beneath the streets of San Antonio, beneath the streets of a city that they could not have imagined in 1836 and that the city skyline of, of San Antonio now serves as their tombstones, which is a fitting and altogether honorable end for their resting place. And I believe that their descendants, that they and their descendants would rest easy knowing that it is so.